your homemade power station is probably wrong. Let's take a look and I'll show you what I mean. There are literally tens of thousands of videos on YouTube of people making their own power stations. You buy a battery, you buy an inverter, you connect them together, and you save hundreds of dollars. That is true, but the vast majority of videos that I have seen, they are doing it wrong, and I'm going to explain why. So power station, we're not going to talk about solar right now. We're just going to talk about just power. So you've got three components. We've got battery. This is a 100 amp hour mini from watt cycle. I've got an inverter over here. This is a 1,000 watt from Bouge RV. But the piece that most people forget about or don't talk about enough is the wire in between. The other really important factor is making sure that these three pieces, regardless of their size or their brand, all match together. Here's what I mean. Every battery, every lithium battery has what's called a BMS, battery management system. It's a control board inside the battery that regulates current and, and output. So, and those are rated in amps. So most 100 amp batteries have a 100 amp BMS. There are some specialty batteries that have 150 or 200 amp BMS for trolling motors. But we'll just say this one, 100 amps got a 100 amp BMS in it. The inverter is going to pull amperage out of that battery. And the amount of amperage that it pulls is going to depend upon what you got plugged into it. I use the rule 10 to 1. So if I'm pulling 1,000 watts out of my inverter, I'm going to pull 100 amps out of my battery. That's actually a little on the high side. Oh, there's a picture of me actually testing it. Because of the voltage difference, that's actually a little off. On this particular inverter, 850 watts on the AC side is only 70 amps on the DC side. But 10 to 1 rule is nice, makes the math nice and easy and gives you a cushion. Now, the wire in between is something that people don't talk about nearly enough. This is a two gauge. This is my go-to wire now for all of my inverters. There are multiple different charts online of amp capacity ratings and it varies depending upon the length of the wire and the temperature and the composition of the wire and stuff like that. But here's kind of the guideline that I use. Up into 50 amps, I use 8 gauge. Between 50 and you know 85 amps, I use a 4 gauge. And the closer to 100 amps or I get, I go to a 2 gauge. Okay? I think uh, technically, and I'll put a chart up here, a 2 gauge will go up to like 120 amps. I was made aware of this when I was doing a run test a couple of months ago on a four gauge and the wire was getting warm. It wasn't hot, it wasn't melted, but it was warm. So my go-to for inverters is a two gauge. Some inverters will come with wire so that way you can get going. Very rarely are those wires good quality and very rarely are those wires of adequate size. So if I'm gonna be pulling a thousand watts out of this inverter, I need to make sure that my wire can support that, and I also need to make sure that my battery's BMS can also support that. Nowadays, 100 amp batteries all have 100 amp BMSs or bigger, so this, is okay. What's not okay is this. This is a 12 amp hour battery. I see these a lot of time in ammo can builds. This has got a BMS of I think 15 amps, but I have seen multiple people take this and connect it to something like this or bigger. And then they use an 8 gauge to connect the two. So the battery is not going to support that much current, and even if it did, the wire can't support that much current either. 
Let's get this a little bit more realistic. This is my Best Tech 500 watt inverter. So at 500 watts, this will pull around 50 amp, probably a little less. I see people building ammo can systems with little batteries and inverters on them. And this is just also not gonna fly. I don't see any purpose in putting an inverter in an ammo can system because the battery that fits in it is probably not gonna support the inverter anyway. So the max you could pull off of this is about 100 watts off the inverter, which is not big enough to really run anything anyway. Let's make this even worse. About a year ago, I came across a video of a guy who was building his first off-grid system in a shed. And he had like 10 30 amp hour lead acid batteries in parallel, so they were still 12 volts, with this enormous inverter, like a 5,000 watt inverter, okay? So something like this. And he was planning on running his well pump and an air conditioner, a mini split, off of this inverter connected to these tiny little batteries. I'm not gonna post the video, I'm not gonna link to it even if I could find it. I don't wanna poo poo on anyone specifically, but no part of that made any sense. On top of that, if you look really closely in his video, the wires he was using was very, very, very small. So in this situation, I've got a 2000 watt inverter and a 100 amp hour battery with a 100 amp BMS. So if I tried to pull 1500 watts out of this, which the inverter could support, the battery could not. So even if I hook this up, with a two gauge or more, the battery is going to end up shutting down and overheating because this is pulling more than the battery can supply. This makes more sense. This is a 300 amp hour battery from Watt Cycle that has a very large BMS in it, which means if I'm pulling 2000 watts out of this inverter, then this battery can support it without an issue. As long as the wires that connect here to here are big enough. At 2000 watts, it's going to be approximately 200 amps, which means I'm going to have to use an OT2 wire or something like that that's that big around. I'll look it up to confirm, but even my two gauge would not be big enough to support that much current from here to here for very long. I've talked about this repeatedly over the last year, and I'll reiterate, this is why I'm such a fan of 24 volt systems. By taking two batteries and putting them in series for 24 volts, your amperage gets cut in half. So you get to utilize the BMS for essentially double the power while keeping your wire size reasonable and practical. So if you're going to be consistently pulling more than a thousand watts on the AC side, you're going to need to have something bigger than a hundred amp hour battery. It'd be a two or 300. And I think that you should strongly consider going to 24 volts. You can keep your wire sizes reasonable. You know, you'll save a little money on not having to buy and manage create big, huge, fat wires. So everything will run a little cooler, you know, everything will be just a little bit safer and you can draw the maximum amount of power sort of out of the system without overtaxing it. I hope that this made sense and I hope that it was helpful out there to you. So if you're building a system from the beginning, think about what your loads are and make sure that your components match what you're trying to do. Your battery and your inverter and your wire in between all have the ability to pull the amount of current that you really want on the other side. Again, I use the 10 to 1 rule. That's a little high uh, depending upon inverter efficiency, but it'll keep you safe. So thanks everybody. We'll catch you on the next one.